If I could, before I start, just explain that because of this beam, I can't extend it to what would be a typical ceiling height in a home, so I've had to not put it up so high, so, yep. okay. Um, good morning, um, my name is Joe. I'm looking for £75,000 of investment. Um, the problem is changing a light bulb, because when you change a light bulb, you have to stand on something. Now, for anybody, that could potentially be dangerous, but if you're elderly or disabled, it holds a lot more dangers. Now, this is the cause of the problem. It's a domestic ceiling rose. This is my ceiling rose. It's similar, although unique, in that it allows anybody to change a light bulb without the risk of accident or injury. This is how it works. All you would do is, and obviously it would be a lot higher than this, you'd pull the light bulb down to you. You'd then change the bulb. You're on ground level. The power's been disconnected from the ceiling rose. There's no danger of electric shock. You let go, and the bulb's changed. Simple. We're all getting older, and we're living longer. And these type of products are going to come out of the speciality shops into the mainstream. Thank you for your time. Joe is looking for £75,000 for his unique pull-down light fitting. In return, he's offering 49% of his company. Joe, I'm Peter. Hi, Peter. Where do you come from? What, what, what got you to here? What got you to come up with this I've, amazing idea? I thought of this idea when I was doing a project at university where you had to design a product to help elderly people remain independent within their own home. How old are you now? 39. Christ, what, when did you leave the university? 96, I think, and I worked for an American, American company designing orthopaedic implants and surgical instruments. And that's what you've been doing for the last five or ten years? Yeah. Five, five, six years, yeah. Joe, let's get into some, okay. some specifics then very quickly. Yeah. What is the addressable market? How many people potentially will buy this product? Well, people in the past have mistakenly thought of these type of products as special products, but they're huge market opportunities. The over 50s control 100 billion pounds in this country of the spending market. Oh, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me pull you up there. You can't say everybody that hits 50 is your customer. Because my old mum, she hear you say that, she'll be down here with a rolling pin. Well, because she prides herself on being able to change her own light bulb. That's so there is a market, but it is a specialist market. Don't assume that everybody over 50 is going to require a wheelchair, a bath chair, and one of your ceiling roses. New houses have to conform these days. The light switches have got to be a certain height. That's regulation. The doorways have got to be a certain width. And I might perhaps target the housing associations, the builders building new homes to have them installed. The, the, the reason why James Dyson has been successful is because he's managed to persuade people to buy his product. Whether his product's any better than... But his exists. product is for the whole market that uh, buys vacuum cleaners. I'm saying Your with product's the, not. I'm saying with the, with the right marketing, perhaps, and the right... OK, how are you going to market it, then? Well, I'm, I'm stood here today because I'm looking for someone to invest in me and my idea that can tell me that. You know, I need to be stood on the shoulders of giants. <laughs> Unfortunately for Joe, his extraordinary attempt to win over the dragons has bemused rather than impressed them, and his vague grasp of the market has put off Doug Richard. Joe, I have no idea why I would invest, because I don't know whether there's a sufficient number of people to buy it. You might be a good product designer, but you're not an entrepreneur, and that, that's, that, that's fatal for me. So I won't be investing today. With no clear evidence there's actually a market for his idea, Joe has lost the interest of Doug Richard. Duncan Bannatyne wants to know more about the product. What would this cost to buy in a shop? It may cost to have it produced in China, £1.50, £2, and it retail for £8, but I'd like to be less than that. OK, what does this sell for in the shops? That can cost anything from a pound to £2. 
And that's going to be eight pound. At, at the complexity of mine compared to that, it could be, it is going to be more expensive, but it gives you more benefits. Yeah. It is going to be more expensive. It's obvious. I tell you what, why why do they keep packaging these things? Like this? Old people can't get them open, you know. No, I, I made those packets. I just I can never get them open. Uh, yeah, but I wanted you to visualise this product as though it would be if it was invested in and it was in a shop as though you picked it off a shelf. It, this isn't on sale then, because no. it says here focus DIY. That's and... just a model. This doesn't exist. This is just a demonstration model. Oh, so it's not. Part of the investment I'm looking for is to actually take this into research and development to produce oh. a pre-production working prototype. You have not as yet built a pre-production model or anything. This is, at the moment, these are mock-ups, yeah. which you've mocked up. You haven't actually built a prototype to see if it actually works. And what you're saying is, eventually, you could have this product on the market selling eight quid. Joe has come to the Dragon's Den with no idea if his product even works. He has big ambitions for his 75,000 pound project, but with no prototype and no market research, he appears to have made little progress on it since university. Joe, you're so early on the day. I can't make a decision on the product because I don't know if it works. It certainly can't hit the market. I think you are targeting. It's a very specialist product, but it's not something for me, so I shan't be investing. Theopafetis is out, and Joe's confidence is shrinking. Now he must hope that Duncan Bannatyne, Peter Jones or Rachel Elnor will invest the £75,000 he needs. Before you go and spend any more money on design consultancies or, or anything, go and actually find, is there a real market? Is there anyone who's going to buy this? Because I suspect if there is one, it's very, very narrow. And it's not something I would invest in. Rachel Elnor is the third dragon out and Joe's hopes for investment are slipping away. Duncan Bannatyne and Peter Jones are the only dragons left. Joe, I don't think there's any chance of this selling in big quantities in places like B&Q. I don't think it's going to be a big seller ever. Yeah. Um, so I'm definitely not going to be investing in you. OK. Joe, um, I actually think it's quite a good little idea. Um, this isn't a business, though. Um, I don't think you're going to sell any. That's my problem. And for those reasons, that's why I can't invest either. Thank you. Joe's dreams of success have been shattered by the dragons. His conviction alone was not enough to convince them to invest. Joe, you're looking a, a tad shell-shocked, but it wasn't that bad, was it? No, it was OK. I, uh, I came here with a simple plan and I knew it was a big risk, a high risk investment. It's a concept that needs developing. It doesn't exist as a product. But you're not going to give up, though? No, no, I, I, I'm realistic about my product. They, they might be well off enough to have people do things for them when they get elderly, but one day these people will realise that they won't be able to walk up the stairs in their house when they're 70 years old, that they'll have problems changing a light bulb. But at the moment, this is the whole problem. People don't understand that. And it's hard to sell this vision to younger people.